Good morning. Uh, this morning, I'm concerned because we're reading about more churches that are defying the order to uh, not meet in large groups. And many of these people are claiming that they've got to obey God rather than man and, and that the Bible says not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Well, I want to take a look at that. Uh, give us maybe some insight into this. Uh, I want to share uh, Hebrews 10.25. I'd like to invite you to join with me in your Bible. And, of course, before I read God's Word, I always like to pray first. So please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will give us wisdom uh, regarding Hebrews 10.25. Lord, we're living in uncharted uh, times, uh, days like we've never seen before. Lord, teach us how to apply your word to our world today. And thank you for sending us the Holy Spirit to guide us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. So here in uh, Hebrews 10.25, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Okay, we believe that the, the day of, of Christ's return is, of course, a lot nearer than it was back when the book of Hebrews was written. And it says not to neglect our meeting together, or as the King James Version says, the assembling of ourselves together. Now, when we think of the word assembling, we think of like a large crowd, you know, like a high school assembly, you know, a, a, a lot of people. But uh, let's take a look at... Uh, I've got the uh, Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 7. And here on page 463, it is addressing Hebrews 10.25. And it, it says here that uh, not forsaking or neglecting, not neglecting, uh, the assembling. And here it says the writer here refers to Christian gatherings for the purpose of worship and mutual encouragement, which in New Testament times were commonly held in the home of believers. Okay, so Hebrews 10.25 isn't telling us we have to meet in a large crowd in a, in a uh, church building. All right, and, and it never was that way. I've, I've, uh, I've, through my whole ministry, I have uh, encountered people who have told me that home church isn't real church. If you really go to church, you'll go to this building. That's not what the Bible teaches. Uh, yes, I, I love church organization, but at the same time, uh, you can be organized. And, and I have been to church buildings. I've preached in church buildings that had few enough people. They probably would have been a lot better off just meeting in a home. So there's nothing magical or sensational about a building. All right? Jesus told the woman at the well that those who worship Jesus, that worship God, worship him in spirit and truth. It's more of the spirit and the attitude we worship with instead of what building we're in when we worship or if we're even in a building. All right? So... Uh, so Hebrews 10.25 isn't telling us that we have to meet in a formal church service or in a building. When, he, when the writer was uh, sharing this here in Hebrews 10.25, people were meeting in homes. And that is what the author of Hebrews tells us to continue doing and don't neglect it. Um, you know, sometimes I think over the years, that when we meet in church buildings, it, it's we're actually avoiding uh, being sociable. You know, let's not meet in each other's homes. Let's just meet in a building, and then we go to our own private homes, and and let's not share bread together in each other's homes. Let's just meet at a at a fellowship dinner or potluck right after church, and we'll we'll visit there so that you don't actually come into my house and invade my own territory. Uh, you know, sometimes I think those uh, social fellowship dinners are actually antisocial. 
uh, because it, it's actually avoiding going into each other's homes, actually getting to know each other more uh, personable, personally and more intimately. And I didn't mean to go off on that, but I did. Um, but I, I was also talking to a man that was telling me that uh, we should have the faith uh, that is shared with us in Psalms 91, where it says that, you know, a thousand shall fall at your side and, and all, but it won't come near you, and, and that he'll send our... He'll send his angels to uh, to protect us, uh, so no plague will come near our house. Well, I had to tell this gentleman that that is the exact scripture that Satan was quoting to Jesus in uh, Matthew chapter four when he was tempting Jesus, and and he told Jesus, uh, "Go ahead and and jump off this cliff here, and, and God will protect you." Uh, Actually, it was a temple here in uh, Matthew 4, verse 5. Then the devil took him, to Jesus, to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and said, verse 6, If you're the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say he will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot with a stone. Okay, Satan is quoting Psalms 91. And what does Jesus say in verse 7? The scriptures also say you must not test the Lord your God. Okay, we have the promises today of Psalms 91 that he will protect us from these plagues and, and so forth. But at the same time, we're not to test him. That means that during this time, we can stay home. We can still assemble together with our families you know, the scriptures say where two or three are, are gathered together. It doesn't have to be a huge crowd. God will be with us. And we can also assemble ourselves in the spirit, on the phone, on, uh, on over the internet. And we can encourage each other that way. I think that is totally within the spirit that the writer of Hebrews was sharing with us in Hebrews 10, 25. You know, the Old Testament uh, talks about people being quarantined to keep God's people safe. So even though God gives us those promises, he still expects us to do the practical things that we can do to stay safe. Don't test God. And, and we can continue assembling ourselves together over the internet, in very, very small groups with our families. Uh, and I encourage you, if you do meet with other people, you know, stay six feet apart. Follow these guidelines. They make sense, and they do not contradict the Bible. Will the time come when uh, we as Americans will not be allowed to worship According to our conscience, yes. And it's probably coming a lot sooner than we realize, but it's not here right now. So instead of being troublemakers, let's follow Romans 13 and comply with the law as far as we can, and let's show real love by being considerate and doing what we can do to keep this disease from spreading so that we can save lives. And that's what I want to share with you today. And uh, I hope this makes sense to you. And uh, let's uh, continue to uh, pray that this will go away and that many lives will be saved. God bless you.